Hi, I'm Paul Starkey with the RL Debtman Company, the startup and warranty department. Uh, in this video, we're going to be showing you how to replace a seal and bearing on a VSX pump. Uh, in our previous, on the previous video, we uh, took a seal and a bearing out, and now in this video, we're going to actually replace the seal and replace the bearing and put it back into the pump. Before you uh, start to uh, replace the seal and bearing on your pump, you're going to want to make sure you go through the IOM. Make sure you get all your parts ordered or make sure you come and pick them up from us. You're going to make sure you want to have a new seal, probably a shaft sleeve, a bearing, a quad ring, uh, a new swinger, and then a new set of gaskets that goes on to your uh, seal plate cover. You can order all them parts from us. They're all in the IOM for the, that size pump. Uh, any parts that you don't use, you can always bring back and return to us uh, for credit. But it's better to have them all so that way when you tear the pump down, you got all the parts there. If you, if you need them, you got them, you can put it all back together. <clears throat> okay, uh, now we have the seal cartridge out of the pump. This is your actual seal. This is your shaft that went over your shaft on your pump as you've seen earlier that we've taken out. You have to remove there's an e-clip on here especially when these pumps are older you're gonna there's a little ring that's on top of here you can take a hammer and a screwdriver and pound that down this is actually this demo is a new seal I don't want to destroy it but if you pound that down you get a big enough gap where you can actually get in there with your players and actually remove this clip right now you can't do it because of that rings on there so by pushing that totally down you can remove that Now that we removed the seal and our e-clip, we have everything removed and we actually took the carbon piece out of our base of our seal plate. You have your shaft here. This shaft, you take some memory paper, you want to clean it all up, make sure that it's nice and smooth, it's not grooved. If this thing has any type of grooving in it or any type of wear, like I said, you'd have one of these that you had already bought, you would replace this. If it, everything looks smooth and good, you would just you would clean it up, get everything nice and clean. You'd clean your your uh, seal face in here. You want to clean this all real good. You can take a screwdriver or you can take a putty knife and scrape all the crud out of here. And get you want to get this all real nice and clean and shiny. After that's done, then you can take your uh, take your new seal out of your box. I recommend washing your hands. Get all the old grease so your hands are clean because you want you want the seal to be clean when you put it back in. <clears throat> Um, you can go ahead and take your carbon piece out of the box. We usually use this. It's a P80 lubricant gel that, that we usually use. We, we put on uh, on the O-ring on our seal. It just helps lubricate it. Helps them go in a lot easier. We put some around the O-ring. We put a little bit on the seal face. Usually you want to take a clean rag or a lot of times your new seal will come with a little round piece of cardboard that you can actually put on here and then you can push that in. <coughs> you can actually hear it clip in. It's sealed by an O-ring. You look at it and make sure it's all flush all the way around. It looks good there. It's flush on the inside. Okay, after you have that piece in, you got your shaft clean, you'll go ahead and put that back over the top of your, your shaft. <clears throat> You'll take your seal out of your box. Again, you want to put some lubricant on that rubber. Usually put that around there. <clears throat> Sometimes you can put a little bit, just not a lot, around the shaft. <clears throat> and you can go ahead and slide these two together. Make sure you put it on the right way. That your seal face going onto there. Don't put it on backwards. <clears throat> Now that the seal's on the sleeve, you can, you can put your e-clip back on. There's a little groove that that sits into. Put that back in. You can actually you can pull the seal back up where it rides back up on there. Because when this slides in and you lock this on the shaft, that just gives you the right tension for your seal. All right, after you have that done, you can come down to your actual pump shaft. You'll want to do the same thing. Take emery paper, Scotch Guard, clean this shaft up. You have a new quad ring. It's not an O-ring. It's a quad ring. It has like two grooves and a high spot in it. 
and there's an actual way in the back here is an actual groove you put on there because that's what seals this shaft to this sleeve same thing i use a little bit of lubricant on that i put a little bit on my o-ring you want to be careful when you put this ring on you want to stretch it these edges are sharp you don't want to nick it <clears throat> i sort of pull it over top of that i go over top of the next one then i make sure that my quad ring is lined up and it's not turned in any wrong way and i just slide it back easy till it goes into that groove now that our quad rings installed you want to clean your gasket surface up you got one here and one on your seal cover <clears throat> get those nice and clean you have your new gasket what we usually do is apply a little bit of grease the same grease that we use on our bearing on your gasket makes it come apart easier next time plus it holds it in place when you're actually installing this okay okay we have our gasket installed we're ready to put our cartridge back into the pump we'll slide that back over the shaft should go on nice and easy and everything is nice and clean right at that point I can feel that quad ring so you push it a little easier I sort of turn it and you can feel it go over top of the quad ring there she goes at that point there you can go ahead and you're ready to put your four bolts back into your plate here Okay, we've tightened all our bolts. And, uh, another thing I want to mention, make sure when you take this apart, that you, this is actually for a flush line, if this pump had a flush line, that you put that plug back at the top. Sometimes when you take it apart, you might even want to take a magic marker and mark it. And that way you know how it goes back on. Now you're ready to tighten your set screws on here. When this was pushed all the way back, there is a little groove on this shaft that those two should be flushed. But actually, when you push that back over that quad ring, it's going to go back so far and stop. But if you know you're back far enough if you see that groove. You can go ahead and tighten your set screws. Set screws are tight now. We're ready to put the back plate on. This is the actual back plate that backs up to the bearing. This has a actual seal in the back of it, a little lip seal. You should have one of these extra two if you got to replace this you just knock that out with a screwdriver and it just presses right back in the slinger would go on next <laughs> then your actual plate will go on behind that and then next we will we'll have to take our bearing and actually we got an induction bearing heater over there. We're going to heat this bearing up until we get approximately between 225 and 250 degrees. Okay, we have our bearing on our induction bearing heater. We're going to turn that on. We're going to heat that up, like I said, 225, 250 degrees. We have an actual temperature that we can check the inner race of that bearing after it starts to heat up. It's probably going to take about three or four minutes. Well, that's heating up. What I usually do at that point is I take there's a snap ring that goes on behind that bearing that goes on to the pump shaft. So when that's heating up, I go ahead and at this time I put that snap ring on. Okay, now our bearing's at 225 degrees. We used our sensor to make sure. We put our gloves. We go ahead and usually grab the bearing with a pair of channel locks. Put it on the pump. You want to make sure this shielded side of your bearing goes on the inside. Bearing on the shaft, give it a little tap with your channel locks. It should go all the way back to where that E clip is. Go ahead and put that on there. Then you got your little spider washer that goes back on. You have a groove in this washer and you have a groove on the shaft, so that can only go on one way. And you go ahead and put your locking nut on. It's tapered on one end, so your tapered end is what actually goes into your washer. You don't want to go on the op opposite way. Actually, it won't fit. Okay, you go ahead and thread your nut on, and you can take a, a screwdriver and tap it around until it just starts to get tight. You want it snug. One of these prongs on that washer will line up one of the notches on your nut here. Then you can actually take that notch, bend that down into where that's notched out and that locks it that locks the nut so it won't back out what we usually do is let this bearing cool 
want to get it back pretty close to room temperature, so below 100 degrees, so we can put our housing back on. So we let it cool. When it's once it's cool, then I'll show you how we pack the bearing, and then we'll actually put the final cover on and bolt everything up. Okay, we've let our bearing cool down. Uh, we use we use this mobile Polyrex EM uh, <clears throat> grease. We go ahead and we'll uh, we pack the bearing. There's usually not as much grease in here, but since this is a newer style pump, we, uh, we just go ahead and we'll add a little bit of grease. What you want to do is pack it till all your bearings are full of grease. We get that all packed good. <clears throat> And at this point, you're ready to take your bearing bracket and install it. <clears throat> you want to do is you clean out your old grease in here from your old bearing, wipe all that out, clean that out. You don't have to worry about putting any grease in here at this time until after you get the bracket installed. Okay, we've tightened <clears throat> all our bolts for our bearing bracket, and then we've actually put our four bolts in for the bearing back plate. At that point, you can go ahead and put your OSHA guard back on to the pump. Then we usually take the grease gun with the same grease and grease bearing with. You have a zerk fitting hidden underneath here. Put about, uh, probably about eight pumps of grease into there. That'll fill the rest of this cavity. And you shouldn't have to grease this pump anymore. That should be it for the life of that bearing. Well, you got your grease gun out. It's kind of a good idea. You have jacking bolts here. If you ever have to pull this impeller or cover plate, you have to pull these out. So we usually like to fill these with grease and these with grease. So. Ten years from now, just as a chill water pump has been sweating, you can get a jacking bolt in there and you don't have to sit there for a half a day and try to clean the threads. They usually stay pretty clean. Okay, this completes the video of actually changing a seal and a bearing in a VSX pump. Remember, you have two, one on each end of the pump. So when you're ordering parts, you have a pair of everything. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, you can always call RL Detman Company, ask for a startup and warranty, or you could ask for one of our customer service representatives. We'd be willing to help you. Um, I want to thank you for watching the video, and thank you for doing business with the uh, RL Detman Company.